Ryan Suzuki, Habs Entry Draft Prospect, number 10, A Closer Look. I'll give you my take and a scouting report on Ryan Suzuki, Nick's younger brother. And you can decide for yourself if Montreal should pick him with their first round pick. And that's all right here at Talking Habs with me, Rick, the number one Habs channel dedicated to the Habs and all things hockey. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. It's down there, or up there, or over there, or up there. I don't know. Uh, and then notify you of all my videos as they come out. And you can leave any comments you might have about this video, about Ryan Suzuki, about anything else, in that comment section below. Okay, we'll get right into it. Ryan Suzuki, Nick's younger and possibly talented, more talented brother, is following along the path that Nick is, lead, is leading. He was the first overall pick in the 2017 OHL draft. He was named the OHL's to the OHL's all-rookie team, putting up 14 goals, 30 assists for 44 points in 64 games. In his second year last season, he improved to 25 goals, 50 assists, 75 points in 65 games. Uh, as I mentioned, if you watched my live stream the other day, uh, I love to see centers with double the assists than goals. Uh, he scored three goals, four assists, seven points at uh, 2018's U17 tournament, say that five times fast, and one goal, seven assists for eight points at the Halinka Gretzky Cup. Uh, at 2019's U18 tournament, he wasn't very impressive with zero goals, one assist for one point in five games, and I think his stock has dropped a little since that performance. He's still worthy of being Montreal's uh, first, uh, first, first round pick, 15th, and I would not be disappointed at all if they did pick him. So Ryan is considered one of the smartest players in the OHL in only his second season. He has elite offensive skill, but isn't a very physical player and tends to avoid the dirty areas, and is skilled at avoiding being checked uh, with his nifty twists and turns. The puck often seems stuck to his stick as he stick handles around defenders, working his way to the net. He has a full arsenal of shots with a quick release, but will need to add some power to them as he gets stronger. He's creative off the rush and can work the cycle game. A great playmaker and can run the power play from the half boards. A tenacious four checker who battles along the boards and in front of the net, but needs to add more strength to be more effective in this area. Defensively, he will need to improve and he'll need to get stronger here too. He has trouble when he sports the D down low to contain big powerful opponents. His skating and active stick help him here, especially on the, on the penalty kill. He creates turnovers that he can quickly transition into offense. Positionally strong with good reads and anticipation. And here's some other quotes from uh, some other scouting reports. A creative and efficient playmaker. Has a level of vision and soft touch few possess. Very poised and patient with the puck. Um, thinks the game two steps ahead. High end vision and puck skills that make him difficult to defend. He has a burning top speed. Thinks the game at an elite level and is just plain fun to watch. Ridiculously skilled and extremely high hockey IQ. Now there's one main knock on him, and that's I'll, three, three quotes on the one main knock. Uh, he can get lost on the perimeter for stretches. Legitimate concern that he stays on the perimeter too much. Needs to get inside the dots more regularly. So he's got to work on being in the middle a little bit better. Uh, but again, that's coachable. Like I always say, it's not something that you can't coach. It's the, ta the talent, that scoring, that passing ability that's hard to coach. Skating. Unlike his brother, Ryan uses outstanding skating ability to make space for himself and create chances for himself and his teammates. He uses his speed to win foot races uh, wide and then accelerate to the front of the net. So he comes out wide, along, I guess, along the boards and then into the net. He can change direction or speed to open up passing and shooting lanes. He has the ability to change gears while rushing the puck up the ice, allowing him to fool defenders 
uh, and his uh, agility and edge work make him even more dangerous. So his projection. Expect Suzuki to spend one or two more seasons in the OHL. Working at getting stronger and fixing up some small problem areas of his game. His skating, hockey sense, and vision and playmaking skills should translate into a top six center with a strong offensive upside and uh, a decent defensive game to go with it. So now I mentioned earlier about Ryan following along the path of his brother Nick. Um, that Nick is leading. So Nick, like Ryan, had a similar growth in points from Season 1 to Season 2. Nick was dominant this last season in the OHL uh, with 94 points in 59 games and 42 points in 24 games, 24 playoff games. If Ryan continues along the same path as his brother, he could be a potential steal if the Habs select him with their 15th pick. So yeah, I'm still high on Ryan Suzuki. Not done, but I, you know, there's a lot of other guys out there. But if they pick Ryan Suzuki, even with his not great performance at the U18s, he's got mad skills. So with a couple more seasons in the OHL, he might make the jump directly to the NHL, maybe a season in the AHL, but he's got mad skills. Okay, so thanks for watching this video, and don't forget to uh, like, subscribe. See, now you can like because you watch the videos, so now you can like. Uh, and subscribe and ring the bell, and that'll notify you of all my videos as they come out. And you can leave any comments about this video, about Ryan Suzuki, about the airhead here talking about Ryan Suzuki, uh, in the comment section below. That is definitely down there. The like, subscribe, and all that, I think depending on what device you're watching it on, could be somewhere else than down there. And then check out these two videos over here. I'm going to put over here. I hope you like those. And that's it. Have a Blue Blanc Rouge day uh, from Talking Habs with me, Rick. Uh, go Habs, go! And that's it. Bye, y'all.